Good morning, friends, and welcome to the start of a cozy birthday travel vlog. We actually leave town tomorrow. We are going to be heading to the bay. We are going to the coast of Australia. It will be our very first time seeing it. Editing Morgan here to add a little bit of context. If you are new here, I make videos all about knitting and reading and all the cozy things. And I am an American citizen living abroad in Canberra, Australia for my husband's work. If that sounds like your cup of tea, make sure you stick around for the rest of the video. And let's talk about all the things I'm going to be knitting. If my coffee maker running in the background is distracting, I'm so very sorry, but I need my coffee. It's not even 6 a.m. yet. Wanted to start the vlog here and go ahead and talk about all the projects I'm going to be taking as well as take you along today because I'm going to be going on a cafe date with my Aussie knitting friends and we're also going to go yarn shopping and I'm feeling like splurging on some birthday yarn. Specifically, I'm thinking about potentially buying a different yarn than the yarns I was planning to use for my stash for my Dagmar jacket. Yesterday, I put up a poll on my Instagram between my two Knit Picks yarn. One is beige and one is brown. And most of the votes were for brown, but I think I would be running low on yarn if I did the brown. And I'm so done with playing yarn chicken. And I thought it would be a little nicer to get yarn that was intended for that project and have enough of it. But yes, so the plan today is to go yarn shopping and I will definitely take you along with me. And it also feels like a very special knitting date because Mickey and I are going to be wearing our finished cumulus blouses. We just finished our buddy knit yesterday and I've been working on editing my cumulus vlog. I vlogged this entire project and it is such a big special video. There are so many fun things in it. And tomorrow we will be loading up the car with all of our beach goodies and heading to the coast. We are going to be staying in a cute little Airbnb that has a view over the cliffside and over the water. So it's gonna be just such a special birthday experience. I'm really looking forward to just having time with my family, with my husband on vacation, because since we arrived here, he started work literally the next Monday and hasn't really had dedicated time off since then. So it will be nice to travel and we just didn't feel like traveling during winter. So now that we're entering spring here, we're really excited to start exploring and seeing all the places here. So let's talk about what projects I'm going to be taking with me. I want to finish my August Colorwork Cuff Club socks. You heard that right. I'm still working on the August sock and it is mid-September. <laughs> but I'm truly almost done with it. I'm past the heel, I'm on the foot. I'm gonna work on this today on the knitting date. And I really think I'll be working on the toes in the car tomorrow if I don't feel like I'm gonna get car sick. <laughs> And then I'm obviously going to also be working on my Salty Day sweater. I'm so excited to get The second project I'm obviously going to be taking is my Salty Days sweater. I have put the body to rest. I finished all of the body knitting. I just have to do the twisted rib at the bottom. And your girl was not in the mood for doing twisted rib all the way around the body yet. So I went ahead and picked up the neckline and I'm doing twisted rib here too, but it's a lot more encouraging to do the bottom hem of a body when you've already gotten the neckline on it because it's just like feeling like it's really coming together. I struggled so hard picking up the stitches for this neck. I think I did it 50 times. I know I'm being dramatic, but like I was actually pulling my hair out. I took a hilarious photo of me being super stressed and sent it to my girl chat. But I finally got it and I'm only like three rows into the twisted rib and I think there's like 20. I'm definitely going to do the slip pearl rows halfway through so that it has a neat fold. I usually follow the neckline instructions for the Sonia sweater by Petite Knit because I already own that pattern even though I haven't knit it yet. And it creates a really neat fold for the double folded collar. So that's what I'm going to be doing for this one, but you could also just do a pearl round halfway through the neck and then fold it over and that's super simple. And my plan is to knit charted sleeves, but I definitely won't be doing that in this vlog. Someone in our group chat actually created the charts for the instructions to do charted sleeves to match the body. And that's such a lifesaver. Like I love having a bunch of big brain knitters in this group. <laughs> But yeah, my goal for while we're on this trip is to hopefully get the neckline at least put onto 
And if I finish that and feel like working on the body hem, I might, but I don't think I'm even going to take my needles to pick up stitches for the sleeves because we're not, I'm not going to have that much knitting time. I do still have a toddler and even though I'm in vacation mode, so is he. <laughs> and then I have one more project to share with you that was a cheeky little cast on. I haven't shared this one yet because that's like literally my MO, isn't it? But I wanted to cast on a like spring summer tee. And my plan that I shared in my project plans video was to knit the Rainy Days Tee by Sari Nordland. And I've been yarn shopping for it. But I started having doubts about my yarn selections, which you'll see in my yarn stash video that actually goes up tomorrow. So I'll have that linked up here for you. So because I was deciding what to do with that, I was just really itching to cast on something that I didn't have questions about. And it's funny because this isn't a project that was on my queue whatsoever, but I cast on the Anchor Tee by Petite Knit. I don't have the label on this and this yarn's almost gone, but I am knitting it in Keepsakes Organic Cotton. It is an eight ply DK weight yarn. And it is honestly quite silky. Like it's a really nice texture. As I work with it, I feel like I just keep losing tension because this is the silkiest yarn I've used. However, this is just flying off the needles. It's really, really fun to knit, even though it's nothing but rib. And you'd think with like rib being quite tedious that it's not that fun to work on. Um, but I'm almost done with the yoke. I have one more row of this ribbing and then I'll be in stockinette heaven. And I'm really looking forward to having just an everyday spring summer tee because this is just a spotlight yarn. So I'm not gonna be like, oh, I need to keep that in pristine condition. Like this is definitely gonna be an everyday wear. I will put the podcast on the screen if I can remember who said it, but I think I saw someone say that this is their most worn summer piece. So it just kind of stuck in the back of my mind. And when I was looking at patterns, I was like, you know what? I am gonna knit that. But so far so good, it's working up really quick and I'm eager to work on that a little bit more while we are away. The whole tee is knit with the same needles. I am gonna be short on yarn for this one, but the yarn is available at Spotlight, so I'll just have to swing by there at some point before I can finish it. And the sun is starting to shine over the mountains, so you are going to see me lit in full glory. But I am going to get a cup of coffee and I hope you enjoy this vlog. Let me know what you are working on while you are watching and if you are doing the salty days knit along let me know how it's coming along for you and now it's time for us to unravel Lighting in my dining room is so direct at this time of day, but I am all showered and dressed for my girlies day out. And I wanted to share a clip real quick and state my intentions for this travel vlog because I think it's really important to like normalize and destigmatize the anxious experience. And as someone with anxiety, whenever I'm traveling, I like spend so much time trying to make sure we do things efficiently so that we can do as much as we want to and either things go perfectly or the itinerary goes out the window and I feel like I've lost all sense of control and since becoming a mom I think I've struggled with that even more because I want to make sure that we are planning things to line up around his nap times or that we're in the car so he can get his nap in the car on the way to something and so i just want to state that during this travel experience my goal is even though i am vlogging along the way i just want to go with the flow i want to enjoy ourselves and move at whatever pace works for us and knit along the way <laughs> I'd love to hear if if you have anxiety, do you deal with that too? Do you feel like you need to like 
have control over how things go and whether you have all your resources with you at all times because that is something I struggle with so hard and I'm really trying to unlearn. But, oh my gosh, I didn't even mention. I am wearing my finished Cumulus blouse. This is my first time wearing it. This is its first showcase on the channel and I'm very, very excited. I can't wait to take cute pictures in it. Hopefully, Mickey and I can Mommy. get pictures. Yes. We're beach. Yeah, we're going to the beach this weekend. But beach and yarn shop. Mm, and yarn shop, yeah. So hopefully Mickey and I can get cute pictures in our matching cumulus yeah, blouses today. I'm, I'm so, so excited. And I'll definitely vlog along the way. We are at our Airbnb outside of Sydney on the coast of Australia. It is so beautiful here, not only in our Airbnb, but also the view from our Airbnb. It is literally the perfect scenery for a nice knit by the window. <laughs> When we arrived, I felt like a little old lady. I was like, I can't wait to curl up in that chair and knit the day away. <laughs> but my feet have also officially touched Australian waters. We went to the coast and my son played in the sand a little bit and we went and put our feet in the very cold water. We are really excited to try to swim tomorrow if we can, but we're definitely gonna spend the day relaxing on the beach. And let me just say back to the thought I shared earlier at home. I am so proud of myself that I am really letting go of control with this trip because as I said, since becoming a mom, travel is all about like everyday life, but especially travel is all about how to fit the day and what we want to accomplish around a toddler's nap schedule. And we just were like, he'll sleep when he needs to sleep and, and everything is going really really well better than i could have planned we've just been very carefree stress-free and it's been quite nice i am working on the toe of my august socks which is so exciting but i didn't bring the first sock so i won't be able to like show the finished objects until we get home and i can't wait to block them it is tricky getting the color work over my heel but i do think that it'll loosen up some with blocking 
but our Airbnb also is just filled with toys, which is so, so nice. So it feels like Arthur's also in vacation mode. He's not stressed out because he's not in his environment. He's just like having a great time. So it feels like we can really decompress and just relax. It's just going really, really well. And it's as an anxious homebody, I have such a tendency to just want to stay in my safe space. And I think that's what moving across the globe was all about. I really wanted to say yes to things that scared me and learn how to move through fear. I think I only have about four rows left on the yoke of my anchor tee, and then I will be slitting for the sleeves, which is really exciting because then I'll just be able to chug away on the body. So everything's just going really well, and I hope you are enjoying this vlog as much much as I am enjoying this vacation.
cozy friends it's time for a bit of a mid vlog update i am wearing the same sweatshirt i've been wearing off and on throughout the whole vlog and there's also going to be a lot of chaos in the other room that you may be able to hear <laughs> but i want to update you on all the knitting and beachy things so first off yesterday morning i finished my second august colorwork cuff club sock i didn't bring the first so i can't block and wear them while we are here but i am so proud as i said with the first sock this sock does have to be like teased and tricked to getting over my heel but once i get it over this sock fits like a glove what i did was i cast on 64 stitches for the cuff and i did a one by one rib i think for the pattern you do a two by one rib but i prefer a one by one and then i increased to 66 stitches for the color work cuff and then i decreased down to either 60 or 58 stitches for my foot and that just allows the foot to be a little tighter than the calf which makes sense at least for my anatomy so it just allows it to fit a lot nicer and then the length of my foot Foot from the back of the heel until the dough until the toe decreases was eight inches which is a little longer than I made the other one I just want to try and see which one will fit me better because I'm still figuring out my perfect sock recipe but I'm getting really close and as someone who's pretty new to both color work and sock knitting I'm just so very proud that I was able to do this and then as far as the anchor tee, I think I was able to do a couple rows yesterday. So I only have one increase left on the yoke and then I will be splitting for the sleeves and in stocking at heaven. I think it looks so good. I think this is going to be my most worn summer piece with it being cotton and just so lightweight. It has a very nice satiny feel to it and I'm just really excited to wear this piece. And my friend Mickey grabbed another ball of the yarn I needed from Spotlight because it was available at her local store. So when I get so when I get back, I'll be able to grab that from her and I will be able to finish this without playing yarn chicken, which I guess if you had to buy another ball, you were playing yarn chicken. But when I cast on, I knew I would need another ball. So it's not really like I surprised by that. And then as for my salty, I have a bit of an update. I am halfway through the collar on my Salty Days sweater. What I did was, hold on, nine rows of twisted rib. And then I did three rows of knit one through the back loop and slip the purl stitch with the yarn held in front. And um, that allows there to be a very neat fold. And I'm actually doing this following the instructions on the Storm Sweater and the Sonia sweater. Um, those are kind of the patterns I follow for the folded neckline that I do on every sweater now. And it creates a very neat, tidy neck. I'm almost wondering if I should have picked up a couple extra stitches since I am knitting the medium and I really like a wide neck. But I think um, with how oversized this fit is, it will probably still be as wide as I'd like it to be. And it's just not very noticeable when it's on these shorty needles. But my Salty Days is coming along so beautifully and I'd love to take this to the beach and get cute pictures of it in the sand, but it's just so big now that I just don't think I'm going to. But I did get some cute pictures of it in the Airbnb, so I'm still happy I brought it and could work on it. And then as far as going to the beach, yesterday we thought was going to be our big beach day because it's a little cloudy today, but yesterday was the sunny mid-20s or, or in Fahrenheit that would be mid 70s it was like a sunny perfect weather day so we were planning for yesterday to kind of be our big beach day but um my son's been so excited for the beach for the past couple weeks he's been asking about it and we told him we were going on a beach trip so he's just been so excited and saying beach time shoes on for two weeks <laughs> and once we were there in the sand he was scared and he was upset, he wanted cuddles, and we tried to get him playing with his bucket in the sand, and he just wasn't having it. So after we enjoyed the view for a few minutes and, and put our feet in the water a little bit, we ended up heading out. We packed up and we went to a cafe, and they actually had an entire playground for him to play on, so he was able to lift his spirits, and we got nuggies, and I had an amazing burger. <laughs> 
I was able to knit and I had a nice watermelon juice while my husband drank an iced latte and we just had a really nice what felt like summer day. And if you have been following, you know that I've been complaining about how we have lived through an eternal winter. We moved to Australia going into fall and coming out of the US winter. So we've literally been in a year of cold weather. So this is our first time wearing our summer wear clothes in literally a year. Wearing my shorts is actually so crazy because again, they just haven't gotten any use in so long. So it's really just nice to feel like we are entering a new season of life. And I shared earlier on my Instagram about how our beach day got a little derailed yesterday and how healing it was for my inner child to make space for my son's big feelings and just end the day early, even though it wasn't, you know, what we had planned because as a kid, I would have been told to just like suck it up, you know, and now that I'm the mother, I can choose to honor his feelings and his needs and if he is feeling scared of the water even though I'm telling him he's safe if that's not enough for him it's really nice that I am able to you know make space for that and do what is best for him and I think that that not only makes me feel like a good mother but it also heals that part of my inner child that was told to just put on a smile and so I wanted to share that because whether you have those same inner child wounds or you are a parent and doing the work to do better for your kid. I think it's something that's important to normalize and discuss and talk about. So yeah, I, uh, I hope we're going to try again with the beach again today and see if he has a little bit better of a time, but we won't bank on it too much and we'll probably just do the Grand Pacific Drive if he's not feeling the beach and enjoy the views of the shore. friends I am back home and I never really finished this vlog it is now the next Tuesday so it's almost been a whole week since I ended this vlog kind of abruptly as beautiful and cozy and restful as our vacation was and it was so needed all in all I am so very thankful that we were able to have a special little getaway as a family and get to experience the Australian coast for the very first time we have to do things at just such a different pace with a toddler now and I'm totally trying to make peace with that and give myself as well as him grace for how turbulent it can be. And for a little human, the big ocean does seem quite scary so we do try to just make space for those big feelings but it can be so disappointing when we thought we were going to have a relaxing time on the sand and we did not. <laughs> we ended up kind of spending most of our time just relaxing in the Airbnb. When I woke up on my birthday, Petite Knit had actually released the Dagmar jacket pattern, which if you've been following me on Instagram, you know I was really excited as soon as she started teasing this pattern. Anytime I see a cable knit cardigan, I just cannot resist. 
I think I actually talked about the Dagmar at the start of this vlog because I was hauling my Cascade 220 yarn that I purchased at the beginning of this vlog. But when I woke up on my birthday to the pattern being released, I of course immediately purchased it. So when we got home, I think I got some footage of me winding up one of these hanks into a cake and I started swatching. I have cast it on and it is coming along quite well. The only thing is, is I feel like my gauge might be slightly small. I do think it'll block out some and I could just keep going, but I also kind of want to redo it so that I can do seed stitch inside the diamonds, like on the book club cardigan. I'm actually wearing it. So let me show you on, on the diamond, there is seed stitch instead of just pearls inside the diamond. And I think that looks so much nicer. If I do decide to frog this and re-knit it, I might go up a needle. I haven't decided. I do feel like I'm knitting a little tightly, but I could keep going with it. I just haven't decided. And with how oversized petite knits patterns are, I do think that it is quite forgiving with the gauge but I am going to be sizing down because if you watch my cumulus vlog, I knit the large and it was just way too much positive ease for me. And it ended up having to be cropped because I ran out of yarn. So that is why I think I'm gonna start sizing down when I knit petite knit patterns for the most part, especially ones with a lot of positive ease. If you wanna watch that one after this one, I will have it linked down in the description and up here. But now that that video is up, I wanted to update you and tell you everything I knit while we were away on our vacation. I did finish my August Colorwork Cuff Club socks. They are looking quite wide right now because I've been wearing the heck out of them since we got back. When we came home, I immediately put these in water along with my gauge swatch for the Dagmar. I actually did them separately because I wasn't sure if this yarn was going to bleed and it did a little bit, but I am so, so proud of these. One of them has a bit of tightness in the color work where I have to like literally trick it to get over my heel. And I think I was being a lot more mindful of that on my second sock, but the first sock is a little tight. Regardless, these socks fit the best of any socks I've knit so far. This is like my, this is actually my third pair of socks, but again, I've just been trying to find my perfect sock recipe and I do think I am getting there. I'm very happy with them and have been wearing them almost nonstop. I literally took them off to film this clip. I do think I will be knitting more of the Colorwork Cuff Club socks in the next project I'm going to show you that I worked on while we were away. I actually have made so much progress since getting home, so I'm going to have to explain myself. But I worked on the Anchor Summer Blouse or Anchor Tee from Petite Knit. I am knitting this in a size medium and where we started last week before the vacation was I was on the last row of the yoke. I had no sleeves or body on and during the trip I not only did the raglan increases but I split for the sleeves and knit down to and I knit from here down to this stitch marker on the body. I made so much progress during the vacation. But since then, I have also put on some short sleeves and also worked on considerably more of the body, as you can see. I am on my last skein of it, but my friend Mickey picked me up another skein from her local spotlight. She lives about 30 minutes from me and the spotlight near her always has the yarns I need. So I bought her a Kutar pattern that she'd been wanting in exchange for this skein of yarn and the errand she's running for me. So that will allow me to be able to finish this off. I did end up shortening the sleeves a little bit just as a choice, not because I was going to be short on yarn, but just because I didn't really want it to end at my elbow. I wanted it to really feel like a short sleeve. And I've taken some clips of me trying this on, so I will insert either some pictures or videos here of what it looks like on. I'm really happy with how it's working up. It's working up so fast, and as someone who doesn't usually like ribbing, this actually was a breeze. And I feel like it's going to be done in no time, and it's probably going to be my most worn summer shirt. So I'm really excited to keep working on this and get it off the needles and into my wardrobe. And then the very last thing I worked on during vacation was my Salty Days sweater by Kuto Vakika. As you know, I am hosting the Salty Days Knit Along, and it started at the beginning of September, but it runs until the end of November. So there is still plenty of time if you want to join us and knit along. 
This sweater does work up so fast, but I also am trying to pace myself and take my time with it along with working on other projects on the side. And I just want to enjoy the journey with everyone. For my neckline, I'm not sure if I said it already in this vlog, but halfway through I did three rows of slipping the purl stitch in order to create a very neat fold. And I still just have to finish the rest of the twisted rib. But twisted rib is so tedious on the hand, so I'm really just taking breaks with it and only working on it when I feel like it. I am going to be doing the charted sleeves. Someone in the knit along group chat actually created a document of the modification to knit the same charts from the body on the sleeves. So I'm going to be doing that and I absolutely love having this little community of big brain knitters to do all the math for me so that I can have a really cool modification. <laughs> I feel like I'm a broken record and probably saying all of the same things I've already said in this vlog, but that's only because I literally filmed the clips for this over a week ago now and I'm only just now well enough to close out this vlog. When we got home, we actually fell sick. I had a headache and a sore throat. We took COVID tests. I don't know what was going on. I want to thank you so much for all the love I was sent on my birthday. It meant so much to me. And I'm just so thankful for everything in my 25th year and welcoming all of the beautiful things in my 26th. I feel like this past year, I not only took a chance on myself with this YouTube, but have seen so much support with it and it just means the world to me. So I just wanna thank you so very much for being here and choosing to spend your time unraveling with me each week. If you're not already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future cozy videos. Don't forget to do something cozy for yourself and I will be wishing you a very cozy week.